Hi guys. Hi guys. Thank you very much for joining us once again as we study the book of First Samuel. Mm-hmm. We are left with about two chapters now mm-hmm. and it's been exciting and we just want to encourage you to continue growing this habit of studying the word of God. Yes. Father God, we are so grateful, Lord, that you have brought us this far. And we ask, Lord, that as we continue studying your word, that this will not just stop here, that it will be a habit that we cultivate and make a part of our lives, Lord. We bless you. We honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. In this chapter, we are told that David was asked by the king of Achish to go to war against the Israelites. Mm -hmm. And when they go to the battlefield... The other commanders were unhappy with the king. They told the king to let David go. And the reason they were telling the king to let David go is because of David's history. Mm -hmm. The people in Israel had sung about David, that David had struck down thousands. And you know, this scared the commanders of the Philistines. And so they asked Achish to let him go. And when Achish called David and told David about this, David acted in a way like he was displeased. Mm -hmm. Uh, That, you know, what fault have you found in me? And, you know, the king told him that, you know, you have been so good to me. You have been honest Mm -hmm. and there is no fault I find in you. But Mm -hmm. the other commanders are unhappy. In order for there not to be havoc, I'm going to request you to go back to the place that I've assigned you. And we see David leave and go back to the place he was assigned. And we want to talk about how God provides for us a way out, even as we look at First Samuel chapter 29. Yeah. Now, how did God provide David a way out? Now, David placed himself in a very compromising situation. He was going to go and do battle against the nation of Israel. Yeah. Now, David's turn had always been, I will not touch the anointed of the Lord, but he was going to go ahead and fight against Israel. I imagine what people would have said. The same people who had been singing how he had killed and slain thousands for Israel were probably going to go against him because he was going to attack his own nation. And God provided a way out. Let's read from verse 4. But the commanders of the Philistines were angry with him. And the commanders of the Philistines said to him, Send the man back that he may return to the place which you have assigned him. He shall not go down with us to battle, lest in the battle he become an adversary to us. For how could this fellow reconcile himself to his Lord? Would it not be with the heads of the men here? In his grace, God used Philistine commanders to make sure that David goes back home and he doesn't make the mistake of fighting against Israel. He gave David a way out. And you know, the Bible tells us of different stories of different people who God offered way out. Mm -hmm. Now, we are told of Lot. Yes. When two men went to uh, Sodom and Gomorrah, we are told that these men uh, were invited by Lot to stay in his house because of uh, the men in that region. The men came to Lot's house and they told Lot that they wanted him to bring the men out so that they would sleep with these men. Mm -hmm. But Lot refused to do that. Yes. Now, as a result, those men asked Lot to leave the city because they were going to destroy the city. Mm-hmm. And so Lot and his family left the city. But his wife looked back and as a result, the wife died. But Lot's other family members managed to escape the wrath of God. Mm-hmm. We are also told of Jesus The Bible tells us in Luke chapter 4 that Jesus went to the synagogue like it was his custom Mm -hmm. and he started reading from the scroll of Isaiah that he was given. Mm -hmm. And he said that the spirit of the Lord was upon him and God had sent him to set the captives free. Mm -hmm. Jesus went on to tell these people of the stories of Elijah and Elisha. Mm -hmm. Elisha had been sent to Naaman and he healed Naaman and there were many different people in Israel. Mm. Then he also told them about Elijah who had been sent to the widow of Zarephath and God had blocked uh, the skies for three and a half years and there was no rain, there was famine in that land. Mm. 
Now, as a result, uh, God sent Elijah to this place and Elijah managed to deliver this lady from famine. Now, when Jesus shared with these people these stories, these people got angry. Mm. And as a result, they drove him out of the synagogue and they took him to the cliff and they wanted to throw him down. Mm. But God supernaturally offered a way out for Jesus mm. and Jesus escaped from these people. And you wonder, why does God provide a way out for people? Because he has a plan for us. Yeah. He has a divine plan. God had a plan for David and it did not entail him going against Israel. He was anointed to be king over that nation. God had a plan for Lot. Lot was rescued and he became a nation. God also had a plan for Jesus. As much as that plan involved death, it did not involve the death by him being thrown over a cliff. Yeah. God made sure that Jesus would die at the appointed time and not before. God always has great plans for us. And even when you're going through a temptation and you wonder, is there a way out? The Bible tells us that there is a way out. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. No temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with a temptation, he will also provide the way of escape that you may be able to endure it. I don't know what temptation you're going through, but God promises us here that he will provide for us a way of escape and that's amazing yeah. so what you do is when you're struggling with the sin or maybe a habit that keeps on coming go to god and say god you tell me you're my way of escape please help me out of this sin and maybe your trap is even darker you're still in the kingdom of darkness you've not accepted jesus christ as your lord and savior romans 10 13 tells us that Everyone who calls on the name of Jesus shall be saved. So today you can call on the name of Jesus in, at this instant and you will receive salvation when you repent of your sins. So if you're out there and you've never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, pray this af after me. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, thank you for your word. Thank you for your word. You promise me, you promise me that when I call on your name, when I call on your name, I will be saved. I will be saved. I call upon you, Jesus. I call upon you, Jesus. I repent of my sins. I repent of my sins. I ask you to be my Lord and Savior. I ask you to be my Lord and Savior. Teach me to serve you. Teach me to serve you. And live for you. And live for you. All the days of my life. All the days of my life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Welcome to the family of God. Yes. If you've just said that prayer, you have become a child of God mm -hmm. and all of heaven is right now rejoicing with you yes. and we are rejoicing alongside them. Yeah. We want to encourage you to get into a Bible-believing church if you're not in one already. <laughs> we also want to encourage you to find some people who will mentor you, who will guide you on this journey that you're now on. Mm -hmm. And I believe that as you do that, God will continue revealing himself to you and will use you for his purpose and for his glory. It was an honor for us to share God's word with you. We hope to talk to you again very soon. May God richly bless you. Bye. Bye.